much, everyone, for attending. Really nice to see you all here. Um, and I concur with you that it has been a great day. Uh, we've had lots of visitors up at the booth, mostly looking for the answers to the quiz, which is <laughs> but others. And Jim, lovely to have your presence here as well. Lovely to see you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's a big story, dark mining, and I actually, that, you know, there's no doubt about it. Um, so I am going to be fairly quick on a few of the slides which I think, you know, are, are less, slightly less relevant. Um, and that one's a fairly irrelevant. But we have a great board, uh, very, um, very well suited to the, the business we're in of mining exploration. Uh, Richard Adevenia is a specialist lawyer in, uh, in resources law. Um, we've got Dr. Ben Hines, who's our head of exploration, PhD in geochemistry, which is particularly useful in um, lithium exploration. And um, Dean, uh, Dean Turnbull, actually, uh, who is up the top there, yes, um, who's rejoined our board, and he's actually an original founder of the company. Great geologist. Um, corporate summary, we are, who are we, what are we? We are a metals exploration company. We've got a very large tenement area around 7,000 square kilometres um, in Victoria and New South Wales, mostly in the orogenic or the mountainous parts of those states. And there's a very good reason for that, that mountains tend to um, give way to fantastic metals prospectivity. Um, our focus at the moment on, in terms of metals is in lithium, uh, is in gold, copper, tin, uh, tantalum, um, molybdenum, which is an often misunderstood and less well-known metal, um, and, uh, and silver, obviously. Um, historic mining occurred across the entire footprint, uh, both in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Um, the old timers, as they're known in the industry, would look for gold. They took a lot of gold out. They also took a lot of tin. Uh, but God bless them, uh, anything less than an ounce a ton, uh, they, they moved on because they had a very expensive um, uh, cost base. So there's a lot of gold left there and they've left lots of evidence of their being there and through a, uh, a, a thing that we use as one of our um, technologies, LIDAR, we've been able to map out from the sky um, all the historic workings. So we know where the old boys were taking it out and that's been a tremendous help to us. Okay, um, we were the first company on the east coast of Australia to discover lithium back in, way back in 2016. Some of you may know that lithium had a bit of a dive in price from 2017-18. Uh, it hit an all, well, not an all-time low, but a contemporary low of $5,000 a tonne for lithium carbonate in March 2020. Um, and hit a high in November last year around 80,000 a tonne, so massive increase. It's pulled back from there, but it is still an immensely profitable business to be in. So we're very excited to be in the lithium game, um, but it's not to put any of our other uh, prospectivity in the shadows, where we have tremendous amounts of gold prospectivity and a couple of small resources. Um, Gold is trading in Australian dollar terms at an absolute all-time record high. And of course, you'd be aware that gold at the moment in US dollars around the 2050 level is um, doing extremely well too. Um, we have historic nine historic gold fields. Gold fields are basically collections of historic workings. Uh, we have uh, porphyries, uh, eight, which are outcropping. Porphyries are bulk tonnage geological structures that some of the, the world's largest amounts of copper and other base metals, including gold actually, um, precious metal, uh, are being mined from. So porphyries are characterised by low grade but massive tonnes. Australia's biggest gold mine is at Cadia up in New South Wales uh, on the what we call the Lachlan Fold Belt. Uh, Newcrest own that. They produce about 1.2 million ounces a year from there um, at grades, at cut-off grades, uh, like the lower end of, of grades for mining, uh, of less than one gram a tonne. And it's still an enormously profitable operation simply because they process everything on site. It doesn't have to be moved. They actually produce the gold bars on site. Um, 
So our focus projects at the moment are on the what we call the Doorchap Lithium project, and I'll talk more to that in a moment, uh, and also Granite Flat, which is a copper gold porphyry, which we've done a, a lot of um, drilling and, and soil sam geochemical sampling and things like that. CRA, who are now Rio Tinto, uh, held this, this tenement area many years ago, back in the mid-'80s, and God bless them too, they put in hundreds of drill pads, uh, which we can, and used not that many of them. They pulled out of that because, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, metal prices weren't that great. And that's a very important reference uh, for any project to know, you know, if it's shut down, why? Nine times out of 10, it was because the commodity price was not economic. Last year in July, we struck a deal with SQM um, SQM are the largest lithium producing company in the world. They have a, about a 20% market share. So the deal is what we call a farming joint venture arrangement whereby they agree to, to spend a certain amount of money over a period of time and they earn progressively equity in the project. So the first $3 million spent is a $12 million total package. First $3 million spent earns them 30%. Uh, up to a maximum of 70% after an expenditure of $12 million. My view is that $12 million will determine whether or not we've got an economic project that we can go into development on. So past that 70% point, dart mining has to fund itself dollar for dollar with our partners. But by that stage, we have a lot more certainty about uh, whether we've got a project. So I'd rather have 30% of something that we knew was real uh, then fund the first sort of $12 million through our long-suffering shareholders. SQM are a great partner. They're very easy to work with. They have a tremendous uh, technical depth on lithium. They're one of the oldest uh, lithium producers in the world, headquartered in um, Santiago in Chile, um, have moved over the last five years or so to uh, expand their exploration and production footprints they're in uh, joint venture in Australia also with um, West Farmers, who are a very large conglomerate in Australia, and they're building together through Covalent Lithium. It's not a listed company, it's a private company. They're building a big um, lithium refinery company in Quinana, just south of Perth in Western Australia. Um, they're basically an agricultural chemical company that does lithium, but SQM are a fantastic partner and quite transformational for our company. We have other ground beyond those assets that are in joint venture with SQM. We have other ground in our portfolio, which is also lithium prospective, including the, the historic Walwa tin mine, uh, often tin and lithium associated, as you probably all know. So um, I won't spend much time on this, but this is the approach that we take. So the top line is field activities, Bottom line is sort of office studies, technical studies. Um, so we, we try and you know, find or define um, uh, an early stage pros prospect. We test it, usually with geochemical sampling and stuff, um, moving it on to an advanced target, but still a target. And then we drill, uh, drill it uh, furiously um, just to see whether we can get resources on it. Our exploration footprint, so um, uh, from here, Sydney, uh, Melbourne, somewhere, oh, there, down there, yeah, can't really see terribly well. About a thousand kilometres there, we're kind of right in the middle of it, um, and I'll talk more to the, um, the reasons why they're there, but yeah, six and a half, actually about 7,000 square kilometres of total exploration ground that we have under uh, agreement, if you like, from the various New South Wales Victorian governments. Um, geographic focus historically has been up in this area here, which is a mountainous, orogenic area. Of, that's where we get all the snow in Australia. And actually, in about six weeks' time, our drill rigs in, will be in about a metre of snow. Um, here's the historic Bendigo Ballarat region. It's a very different style of uh, deposit. It's nuggety, whereas ours is actually what we call disseminated, uh, not, not nuggety. I'd much rather work with disseminated gold than nuggety because you can miss an enormous nugget by millimetres with a drill rig and never know it was even there. Whereas disseminated, it's fairly evenly spread through the soils and, and the rock. 
Um, so the reason why we are where we are is that this yellow thing is what's defined as a geological region called the Lachlan Fold Belt. And the Lachlan Fold Belt has a prolific number of producing mines, some of Australia's biggest mines, including Cadia, which is up here, which is Australia's biggest. Um, all the way down here, again, still in the Lachlan Fold Belt, we've got somewhere up here, actually, I don't know that I can see it, but is the Fosterville Mine. Fosterville mine is, the mine is the highest yielding gold mine of any significant production in the world today. They produce about an ounce a tonne. The deeper they go, the higher the grade gets. And unbelievably, because they're about the sixth owner of the project, um, there's been an enormous amount of capital sunk into it historically. These guys picked it up fairly cheaply Kirkland Lake Gold, the company, Canadian Exploration Company, and a very, very good company, I might say. But they um, are producing at about $350 to $400 an ounce in Australian dollars. They are realising around $3,000 an ounce on that. But their big issue is they've not been able, despite 24-7, I think they have 50 drill rigs on the property drilling 24-7, they've not been able to expand the ounces beyond around $3 million. So they're chewing through it pretty quick. It'll probably have a mine life of about uh, five years or something like that. So we've got a very big foothold in the Lachlan Fold Belt, which is this area here. Um, and it is a really fantastic perspective area all the way down. To get slightly even more technical, um, the, there are things called the Macquarie Arc rocks, which are deep rocks, uh, which are known to be mineralised in almost every corner. So we're in a good spot. Um, and of course, you know, geology is really the fundamental precursor uh, to any exploration and discovery. This is a very, and I won't spend a lot of time, but essentially we, we group our exploration activities into orogenic gold or mountain-based, mountain-derived gold, uh, we have strategic metals, probably better understood as critical metals, uh, and at the bottom are our porphyry strategies. So that's what we, they're the different regions that we work within, and then there's the tenement areas associated with those, and then the actual project names, and that is an indication. There's your reconnaissance, target definition, testing, advanced, and definition. So at this point, you've got definition in the form of a jork resource. And depending on a, a jork resource will give you probability of 95% or 98% of what you think is in there being there. So the idea is to just continue to hone these prospects uh, to a point where your probabilities are very high. At 98% you do a, a, a bankable feasibility study and at a bankable feasibility study the banks will actually lend you money to develop the mine. So that's just a quick idea of, of what we've got um, in a number of projects. And just quietly, this is actually be less than half of what we've really got. But that's essentially what we're focusing on. So what did we do last year? We did a lot of work. Um, probably the most important thing, we, we identified that our lithium dike swarm, so lithium's contained within pegmatite dikes, and we have a swarm of those dikes, probably around 3,000 different dikes or thereabouts. We know that there's more than 1,000. But importantly, uh, we did what are called XRD studies, which is a highly technical study, and determined that the lithium mineralisation is spodumene. So spodumene is 95% of the world's lithium comes from spodumene. There's about three other significant lithium minerals, including lipidolite, petalite, and ambligonite. Ambligonite's a, a, a phosphate rock, which it's almost, it's not impossible to extract the lithium from it, but very expensive. So, and lipidolite uh, is expensive. So spodumene is the sweet spot in terms of hard rock lithium uh, mineralisation for extraction. Um, so last year we, we identified that we did a lot of work, a lot of uh, so, uh, sorry, chip sampling and stuff across the entire dike range, and we determined that that was the case. Um, we did about two and a half, three thousand metres of drilling on various projects last year, um, 
on on including Dorchap. Uh, uh, we didn't actually drill Dorchap last year. The drilling on Dorchap started about a month ago, and it's about 600 metres into a phase one, 3,000 metre drilling program. They're operating 24/7, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, Buck, uh, sorry, the different projects we worked on, Dorchap, uh, what we call granite flat uh, copper gold project, which is a porphyry, essentially, a bulk tonnage small grade or low grade. Um, Buckland Gold, which is the one in the quiz today, uh, which is 17 and a half kilometres of anomalous gold at surface through uh, 7,500 soil samples we took on that to establish the uh, 17.5 k um, strike. And that, some of that is going as high as three grams a tonne out of soil at surface. Uh, Rushworth is a, is a slightly different one. Anyway, we did a lot of work on that last year as well. That uh, yellow drill rig, it's not ours, but that was drilling on granite flat last year. This is our core yard up the top. Um, you'll note the solar cells. So we try as best we can to be green compliant. We've got rid of all our generators. We use as much solar as we can these days, and that's not only good for the environment, it's good for our pocket. We, we spend a lot less uh, money on fuel. Um, so, yeah, and, and the core goes out off the ground there for, after being marked up into the, that container at the back. It gets high image resolution images, uh, and then it gets uh, marked up, logged, and then cut, and then a quarter of the core gets sent off to the assay lab for testing. Uh, there we are. Um, some of your work still, this is more office related stuff. We did a lot of new applications, a couple of renewals. Uh, we did the SQM farming joint venture. We are constantly engaged with other big mining companies about the potential for joint venturing other projects that we have on our books. And that is our model. We, we discover to a point, we prove to a point, and then we get the big guys in with deep pockets to fund sometimes what is extraordinarily expensive uh, exploration, particularly on, on uh, porphyry deposits. Um, we did a lot of work. We did a, a fully funded, if you like, by SQM and ESG review. And all this stuff is really important these days. If you are not e on top of ESG, and particularly around environment and communities, community engagement, your license to operate, as they call it, will be very soon uh, re you know, removed. So, we do emphasise that, we're proud to do that, and uh, we take it very seriously. Um, so more importantly, our proposed work schedule this year includes our flagship projects, which are Dorchap Lithium. As I said to you, there's, we should drill about 6,000 metres of lithium pegmatite this year. Um, on top of that, there'll be another between four and 8,000 metres of drilling that we'll be doing with our own rig. Uh, on other copper gold, gold, and molybdenum uh, projects. So Granite Flat, the, we've been there for 18 months at Granite Flat, we're still drilling, and there's still a lot more to do. It's a huge footprint. I think it's about three kilometers by two that we've narrowed the highly anomalous gold copper um, footprint and, or, you know, signature. And we need to drill that out. We did what's called geophysical surveys across it that identified areas of high mineralisation, and a lot of that needs to be drilled out as well. But that project is fabulous. It's got a lot of potential as a low-grade, big tonnage, bulk tonnage, uh, copper gold play. And the other one that we're looking at this year, so that will continue at Granite Flat. Mount Unicorn was probably Dart's first big discovery. It um, is a dominant molybdenum deposit. It's actually in Jork Resource. It's 209 million tonnes at a very low grade of about 0.07, I think, something like that. Um, but the interesting, we've never found what's called the pluton. So the pluton is usually the very high grade area of a porphyry. We haven't got to that, but despite that, we've actually got pretty good economic grades. Now, the interesting thing with Molly is that it has gone from a price in 2015 of $4.50 US a pound to $45 a pound now. Molly's used in high heat applications like elements and kettles and all that, strengthening construction steel particularly, and also in ammunition. And uh, as a result of a decline in copper production, Molly, about 70% of the world's Molly comes out of 
copper uh, as a byproduct um, as a result of the declining copper uh, production and discovery um, and to the point where global inventories are running at about two weeks of global consumption. And that's the lowest in the history of copper that we know of. Um, you've, we've seen a big price spike in the molybdenum price. So Molly's gone from, um, I don't know, about 10 or $15 a pound, uh, hit a high last month of about $45 a pound, trading about $35 a pound now. So Molly's an interesting one and heavily used in military applications as well. Artillery shells and all that sort of thing. And you, know, you don't have to be a genius to work out or draw the line there. Um, so they're the main projects, the flagships. We've also got Rushworth Gold and Sandy Creek and Buckland, where we're planning to do some more. We've just done some LIDAR acquisition uh, and we've got more uh, bulk, ton uh, bulk sample to do at Rushworth and some more diamond drilling at those three projects. I think the interesting thing is, and this gets to business development and model, we are seriously quite different to a lot of exploration companies. We're actually starting to see income. Now, very few exploration companies ever have income. Um, we're getting income from charging our infrastructure, which we've invested in historically, to support the activities of our joint venture with SQM. What we need is a couple more of these joint ventures, and we'll be generating, generating fairly significant income. Also, and I won't get into it deeply, but we have these things called vegetation offsets, and we are the biggest provider in the northeast of Victoria, or about 20% of the state, we are the primary uh, supplier of vegetation offset to the third party market. So if a little township wants to expand the width of the first green at its local golf club and remove native vegetation, it's got to come and buy an offset from us. So I think we've done about three and a half million of offsets in the last couple of years. That comes in over time. Um, that cost us 300,000 to establish that. So it's 10 times our money effectively, but it's over nine years. But we use it a lot for our own purposes. That's why we really got into it. But it's turned into a bit of a cash flow as well. So we are effectively now with a joint venture partner, an exploration contractor um, who happens to have an enormous amount of their own prospectivity. So that is Nirvana for an exploration company where you're generating positive income uh, or income and you can put that straight back into the ground on your own assets. So it's kind of giving you a free option. Am I getting a wind up? I think I am. Okay, so why invest? Well, uh, we're really cheap. We're forecasting between 10 and 14,000 metres of drilling this year. So the implication of that is that there'll be tremendous news flow over that period. I can't guarantee it's going to be good, but I'm sure some of it will be. And um, we're a very small, $12.5 million, around 6 million quid market cap. The exploration market has been really hit stocks over the last couple of years. People risk off, you know. And, but with the looming squeeze on metal prices, which I'm absolutely convinced is coming, we are in a really good place. And it's a great sector to have exposure to. Um, I'm getting really wound up now, so I will go there, leave you with a couple of pictures. Thank you very much.